Yo, what's up? This video has been brought to you by Card Kingdom. Yo, welcome back to another episode of Single Scoop. This week we're playing Glarb Midrange. That's right. When you look at Glarb Calamities Augur, you do think of frogs and maybe you got to force it into a frog shell. But I just want to see what Glarb would play like on its own in a Saltai Midrange style deck. Uh, it's a three mana, two, four with death touch. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. And you can play lands and cast spells with mana value four or greater from the top of your library. Vren the Relentless, tons of cards, Shealdred, the Apocalypse, obviously still in standard and pretty darn good virtue of persistence now let's just make sure to clarify this here and the reason why i brought this up is that you can't cast lock twain scorn you can cast the enchantment obviously but you cannot cast the sorcery side however i'm still playing it just because i think it's a good enchantment all around glarb's ability to surveil too and just help us dig through our deck he just feels like a very powerful engine so let's see how we do on the ladder his hand's looking pretty juicy having the glarb right there means that Maybe if they don't answer my Glarb, I can live long enough to just get the value train going here. I think that Glarb is just going to be solid in any kind of mid-range deck. So I'm excited to see what becomes of this and that theory. I'm going to keep that four drop on top. That four drop specifically being able to kill something, counter something. Uh, probably going to be relevant if this is... Oh, it's bats. Interesting. So it's bats. Uh, what am I afraid of from bats here? I think I want to get rid of the big three drop. Zoraline, yeah, that one right there. Whenever you do, you get to... Yeah, I, got, I gotta kill the Starscape Cleric, right? I gotta do what I can right now, and while I can. Um, Yeah, I'm gonna play Glarp, or Glarb. I get to look at the top card of my library, so we know it's going to be a Deep Cavern Bat. I can get rid of the Zoraline, so that's pretty nice. Uh, I may want to wait, see if I can draw something out of my uh, out of my opponent's hands here. They can't cut down, so it has to be hard removal. Like, actually, just pure meanie weenie removal. Okay, so they're playing Essence cha uh, Channeler. That's actually pretty good uh, for the opponent here. On the brighter side, I... I guess I have an exiling effect, but on the downside, I don't think I have... Okay, how does my opponent lose life? Oh, they can just keep paying with uh, with Zoraline. Zoraline. So let's go ahead and throw away some bats. You know, as a bat deck would. All right, so I drew... Ooh, hold the phone. That's kind of sick, actually. If I leave up two mana, I am not in a great spot. If I let them just swing through, I'm going to take like 100 damage. Right, I'll lose three, then I'll lose... Yeah, that bat will just keep gaining life. I think I've got to hold up mana, and I've got to try to put the Essence Channeler on top of their deck. There's no way I can live through all of this. Or if I try to play Vren, it's not going to work. Zoraline right now is probably the biggest problem I have, so maybe that's all I've got to do. I've got to just wait. I'm going to pass. I'm going to let them go... To, like, not let them go to combat, but right before combat... Sure, Vampire, you got it. So they don't have a Caves of Coila, so they can't lose life right now. But they might have whatever uh, the discard or lose three and then kill a creature or Planeswalker. So, all right. I got to play Urtai. Let's destroy a creature. There it is. Zerlene's gone. They'll draw a new card, but now they're in combat. So I don't know what they're trying to do. They are targeting something in their graveyard. All right. You know, I'm somewhat of a bat god myself here, so I'm pretty excited for this. What are the odds that I... Okay, if I play the land... I mean, I'm not playing the big one, right? That's the big bat god. I get to play another land. That's pretty good, but not great. Uh, I want to have ward. I need to an answer... Uh, my, when my opponent swings, they're going to lose life. But on the brighter side, I get to play Shieldred. I get Bat. Bat doesn't do much. Shieldred, I can block. I kind of just like face tanking all of this right now and playing Vren. I think by doing all of that, that won't be too big a deal. They can swing with Preacher. I'll double block. Let them do whatever they want with Essence Channeler. But right now, they've got to at least pay for Vren. They don't have any life gain right now, if I recall. Nothing here gains life. Amalia, a benefit if they gain life, but no benefit yet. Okay. Hold on. Game, please. Thank you. Let me activate my Glarb. 
land tear asunder and it also just gets rid of something that's pretty good let me see and with the mana i've got yeah i kind of like that actually let's make that happen play a land off the top here oko let me see here what do i like about this oko i mean a lot let me see do i want to play the oko whenever i commit a crime at the beginning of combat on my turn oko becomes a copy of a creature i've targeted that feels kind of bad to just yeah you know what i'm gonna let you go why don't you go right on ahead so i'm trying to see if like okay when it talks well you have the most are tied for the most life you draw a card and lose a life okay so right now preacher doesn't do anything great sure opponent's gonna play zoraline yeah why not i'll go ahead and just exile zoraline looks like opponent's just gonna do some fair attacking here i kind of like this sure do i want to just double block if i double block here that's pretty good i guess if i can draw removal out of their hands that's pretty good i'm gonna activate the ability Ooh, Virtue, I kind of like it like this. Okay, if Virtue is on top, I've actually currently got no problem saving, saving my creatures here. Sure. Sweet. I'm gonna go ahead and play Bat, the Bat God. Then I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the Essence Channeler, which is nice. Uh, and then let's go ahead and swing in. Glarp can hang back. I don't mind. Or actually, I should have probably just saved Garp or Glarp. But you know what? I've got another rat body. So I'm kind of taking over the board right now. This is currently not the end of the world. Uh, if my opponent is going to play Blood Letter of Aklazats, obviously I'm terrified. But not the end of the world. I've also set a stop on my upkeep here. Good game. Ooh, I have stuff to do. I kind of like this. Let's go with Restless Cottage early. Into Mosswood Dread Knight, turn two. Well, I guess we're going to talk more about using Dread Whispers. And then whatever Mosswood does. All right, let's see. what. Oh, I drew, Mosswood Dread Knight drew into another Mosswood Dread Knight. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I at least have Phyrexian Flesh Gorgeous. So that feels kind of good. Don't worry, opponent. I won't be countering any of your stuff. I've noticed that, you know, right now, Cavern of Souls is in every deck. So kind of not the greatest thing to be playing is a bunch of counter spells. Unless that counter spell is able to do something else. Three steps ahead, stuff like that. Which I currently don't have. So we're just going to go ahead and play Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. The old Flesh Bag. Let's see if Flesh Bag's good enough. Please, opponent, don't attack me with all your rabbits. Don't do weird rabbit stuff. All right, Burrow Guard Mentor. This thing's going to get as big as it as the opponent has creatures. But I do have Urtai and Terra Sunder. Well, that's terrible news. Uh, that is a Knight of Errant of Eos. Okay. Um, I guess I'll play Shieldred. Shieldred's pretty nice. At least Shieldred. Brand new card, by the way. I mean, if the opponent doesn't play anything, then that's great. If they don't have any answers to Shieldred, that's even better. I assume they're just, like, pooping out rabbits. They might play Get Lost. They're making some big rabbits. That's fine. So I need to figure out what I'm doing here. I feel like it's probably better to just... I mean, everything they have has, tra like, trample randomly, huh? So I guess if I get rid of the thing that just keeps getting bigger, why not? Sure. Yeah, I'll still take three, but I at least get rid of the massive 7-7. Seven, seven. I think that's worth the trade, in my opinion. So they're going to play Linneus or whatever. Phineas. I think I need to leave up mana, right? Like, if I just play a body, all that's going to happen is they're going to just play, like, a million rabbits, and then I'm super cooked. So I guess, you know what? I think I've got to pass. I'm going to leave up mana here, uh, see what their play is, because I guess I'm not really forced to do anything. I have an Urtai and a Terra Sunder. Let me see. If I counter that, that's the same as just letting them do something to me later. You know what? I'm going to let this resolve. Let the Valley Might Caller grow. See what they swing with. Maybe they'll commit more to the board here because they've got... Oh, yeah, that, that card's got to get countered, right? Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't let the opponent have that one. Okay, so they can draw a new card. They can swing with, t like, what, a ton of their stuff? That's fine. Believe it or not, I kind of just want it take all the damage from all the other stuff they've got uh block with urtai trade with the three two now i at least have flesh gorger plus go for the throat i like that all right so now i can at least hold up mana so i've got go for the throat to blow up valley might caller 
I think that's going to be the biggest and most important thing here for me. Sure. Can't really stop that anyways. Plus, I want to kind of deceive my opponent into attacking here. On each frog, rabbit, raccoon. Okay, sure. This is great. This would leave me exactly alive. By, like, I I guess I'd go to one but then gain six, so that feels pretty good. Can I draw another land of sorts? I need to find my board wipe. Devious cover up one time. Ah, I didn't draw it. Is it on top? Oh, it's a cat. It's a cavern bat. Didn't draw enough spot removal. Uh, feels kind of bad. All right, so I th I'm thinking there's no out here because that was a tap land. GG's. Oh, I've got some scry land, some removal. I think I'm gonna keep this. Hopefully, maybe I can surveil my way to a land. Come on, deck. All right, a tap land, but a land nonetheless. And now I have salt eye colors. Yeah, I, I will say that since rotation, losing, uh, we, we, we've lost a lot of good mana here. Interesting. I think I'm gonna, my opponent has novice inspector, so I'm curious if they're still playing some form of Boros Convoke. Cause there's still a lot of like, you know, like what did Boros Convoke really lose? Not much, right? So yeah, they actually maintained everything they had normally. So, okay. I guess I just have to kill something. Um, I'll kill the novice inspector. Sure, why not? Um, do I? Will I find another land? That's the other question. I, I really need another land here, and or a board wipe. Devious cover ups looking good. Things like that would be real nice here. Opponent is currently tanking. Oh god, they have Knight of Errant Eos. Whiff, maybe. Okay, that's not a whiff, but sure. Land on top, maybe. Yeah, nice. I'm going to throw away my Glarp. I'm really hoping I'm not going to regret throwing away that Glarp. Because if they have case study or whatever, they just play two creatures, blow my thing up. It feels kind of bad, but come on, deck, please. Come on. All right. Yeah, this, this looks like they're going to play both those things and play the case and then just blow up my Glarp. And I do not have a board wipe in hand as it currently happens to be kind of unfortunate. And I know I'm not drawing a board wipe. Wish I had a, a like some kind of spot removal or something I could have done. Or I, I wish I had a land so I could have fired off a spot removal on my turn or on their turn. This way I then wouldn't have to really worry about it. Oh wait, hold on. They didn't have the answer? No case study opponent? I usually assume they always have it. Land on top, land on top. Okay, I'm gonna hang back for a second here because I need to leave up my mana. So if they play the three drop, I've gotta counter it. Assuming that I, you know, they don't just Cavern of Souls me. And I don't know how I feel about Hornlock Wailing Knight Errant, but I do like Hornlock on Warden of the Inner Sky, things like that. And if they don't do anything at the end of their turn, we'll go ahead and just surveil. I think I'm gonna throw away one of these lands. We're gonna see if I regret throwing that away, but I really need to look for devious cover up here before my life gets too low. They also know that I could potentially just block with Restless Cottage. What would they block with that I'm afraid of? I guess I'll block the Warden of the Sky. Do they have like Witch Stalker Frenzy or something like that? Cause I guess I could just take all this damage. It's not a big deal. Warden of the Sky's Inner Sky is gonna die to death touch. Kind of forces them to use the removal. And then I'm probably just gonna go ahead and go for the throat so I can Kill Knight Errant. Let's go ahead and tuck one of their tokens, right? Doesn't matter where. So now they can hit me for essentially another two and I can block again. Uh, great. Sure. So they'll make, what, two treasures? That's pretty good still. They're tapped, thankfully. Okay. Very generous of them, thank you. I guess let's block the one that makes more bodies. Going down to one, they'll get another tap treasure token. Let's go surveilling. I'm a little bit afraid that they might just have the cat. They're playing in a, such a way that leads me to believe they might just have the cat. Well, this is great news because now I have black mana. I played that wrong. I should have probably left up, left up something. Uh, I should have played the Shieldred off the top first before playing the Mirex knowing that I fully well could just find another land, but whatever. Glarp value train, let's go. They've got so much mana. Like, I am so cooked. On the brighter side, I do get to, like, at least tuck one thing. All right, so they're going to draw another card. 
they're down to 16. I mean, hey, maybe they'll just draw themselves to into the ground here. So they've got seven mana. But can I die from here? They would have to spam four one drops or something along those lines. Yeah, four one drops and then play the three drop that gives everything haste. Okay, so they're just going to go ahead and make some bodies. All right, let's surveil. Land, land. So I'm going to probably throw away, throw away the, uh, the bl whatever, Blooming Marsh. I feel like I should leave up mana yet again because I need to leave up Horned Lock Whale. Glarp is going to probably throw away the other Glarp, if I'm being completely honest. I would like to play this Vren because this Vren would be huge. Probably pile on a ton of bodies, but in all seriousness, I don't think I have the time, right? I got to pretty much leave up Urtai, which I guess in theory should have meant that I should have left the Blossoming uh, Marsh or whatever, Blooming Marsh on top. Because Blooming Marsh on top would have meant that I could play that land, still play a 4-drop and a 2-drop. Next turn, been able to do uh, all the things I could ever ask for. Sure, you got it. I think I'm going to let this one go through. Nothing really threatening me yet. Imidane's Recruiter doesn't look to be enough yet. What does the opponent have now? Probably the same extra combat spell. I, I think they just have the same extra turn spell or extra combat spell, the Great Train Heist, which I kind of am okay with them just resolving. Yeah, that, again, still feels okay to me. I'm going to go ahead and just tuck the little little token that currently exists now with Horned Lock Whale. I think, I, I think I've got to try to... No, I kind of like Glarb now, knowing that it's going to die. Yeah, that's fine. Run it. Okay. Wait, what happened here? First strike? Oh, that's a problem. I didn't account for... Wait, I didn't know it got first strike. I thought it just got plus one plus... Oh, wild. Well, maybe should have paid attention to that part. All right, well, time to play. Glarb again. Land off the... Oh, there's the devious cover-up. Okay, so now I'm just left sitting and waiting. Definitely not in a rush for anything here. Devious cover up on the top right now. Uh, Glarb, thank you, sweet baby Glarb. Vren's going to be pretty nice. Oh, human. So the opponent is going to go for all the token stuff right now. And then immediately, wait, they just tapped. Oh, that's wrong. Because Cavern of Souls just auto tapped. Because they wanted to keep that Cavern of Souls untapped. Uh, sure. You got it. Oh, to Glarb. Okay, sure. You got another one of these Legion Extruders or whatever? I mean, at the end of the day, this is fine. I may not have to spend any of my resources fully knowing that I've just got Devious Cover up on top. Kinda am a-okay with them also just playing that other recruitment thingy mabobber. Uh, sacrifice another artifact, sure. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of Legion Extruder now. Eight mana. Am I a Greed Lord if I play Vren? I don't actually think so. I'm going to play Vren and hold up the removal spell. Because I don't actually have to attack. That's the beauty in all of this. My opponent just plays a ton of stuff and potentially just like speeds past me with a bunch of haste. But I can definitely... I, I have a feeling I can still survive. Plus, the humor in Shieldred dealing them too. Especially uh, after killing something with Urtai and then Urtai forcing them to draw Shieldred. Proving that it's still a pretty good card. Play your little uh, Imidane's Recruiter or you're going to die to Shieldred. Makes a body with Murex. Okay, maximizing the amount of things they can play. I can also just counter the Imidane's Recruiter's uh, haste trigger, right? Yeah, the ETB. I think I'm going to do that. But then again, they might just have another copy to play, but whatever. Oh. Oh, we're doing that. Okay, sure. Opponent's going to play Knight Errant of Eos. This is pretty good for us. I know you want to play that Imidane's Recruiter. Please. They got a backup Imidane's Recruiter? Solid. So why wouldn't you just play the one that you got in the hangers? Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, come on. This Devious cover-up's going to be a blowout if they go for this Imidane's Recruiter. Come on, I know they want to. I know you want to. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, cut down's pretty good. I do love me a good cut down here. You got it. I don't know if they would block with everything, but I guess there's no reason to because I am going to pick off an Imidane's Recruiter for a fact. So let's go ahead and surveil. 
I kind of love both of these. It helps me rebuild the board pretty quick. All right. Let's go collect some evidence. Oh, I should have just actually attacked because I realized it, I may not get any value. Because, you know, deadly cover-up will resolve first before it does anything else. Oh, everything is exiled. That's so awkward. Um, you know, Vren, now I feel silly. I shouldn't have done that. I, I apologize. Let's just get Night Aaron of Eos. They have double Imodane's Recruiter in hand. Oh my god. So I'm definitely going to see them play the train troops. Everything that the opponent just did was exiled. Sure, opponent. I could have countered that, I guess. Yeah, go ahead, opponent. This is fine. I'm just going to blow up your Imidane's Recruiter. Yet again. Take six. I'm going to play another Glarb. Glarb will then allow me to play some fun stuff here. All right, opponent. What do you got? I'm just going to keep sitting here and hanging out and waiting for them to play. I don't know. If they play the train troops, that's not actually that bad. I think I need to counter the this this half of the spell. So I am going to counter Imidane's, uh, whatever, the uh, train troops spell. All right, they'll draw a new card. But at least now, that'll be the end of that. So that's one, two... Three Imidane's recruiters dealt with. And then the fourth one is in exile. So they have one sitting in the hangars. Not great, but not too bad either. And if they don't start playing some stuff, I'm just going to go ahead and play a... That's weird. Okay, sure. If they don't start doing anything, I'm going to just play Virtue of Persistence. And as it stands right now, this feels pretty good. They're oh, Okay, they're just going to play Imidane's Recruiter. I will gladly block that. Swing on in. Because you're committed to it now. They just played their last Imidane's Recruiter. So this feels pretty good. Oh, they, there's no way, right? They're, they're not going to just hang back. No, they are going to just hang back. Perfect. So the weirdest attack ever, because I will just block the 3-2. That's all for Imidane's Recruiters. Oh, that's so good. I did not mean to do that. I meant to actually play the uh, Lock Twain side, but I realized that Glarb does not let me do that. Oh, God. Well, let's take go Surveilling. I guess it's not that big a deal because I can just get anything back. Yeah, I'll leave both of those on top. That feels pretty good. That's just two removal spells. I've lost all my Glarbs. No more Glarb in time. They'll swing, it'll solve, then the next turn, they'll do some weird stuff, but whatever. Let's just get rid of the bodies now. Get Shealdred back. No, I kind of like Vren. Vren gives me so many bodies here. Vren is good. Gives me a body, I can kill the flyer. Get a rat. Yeah, I think I like that. Let's do that. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and kill the flyer. Boom. Let's see. So, I want to be able to just block pretty freely. So, I think I will. This will give me another body. I'm going to just play a 7-5 that's got lifelink. So, they've got to get flying right now. And I know they do not have any more Imidane's recruiters. No, not this. They're going to bounce the case back. Oh, no, wait, what? No. Oh, I guess, no, wait, yeah, if they bounced the case back, they could have still done it. They just have to pay seven. Not that big a deal. Oh, no, you're fine. And I'm sure somewhere right now in the comments, somebody's like, oh, Krim, you already had lethal. Let's pretend that I didn't, though. Okay, opponent's just gonna GG pick him up, I think. Good game. We got there. Glarman 3 is looking pretty good, so I'm gonna just do exactly that. Black and red. All right, so Restless Cottage in a Blooming Marsh. Now I at least get to save my Mirex mana. Oh yeah, little little gecko friend, you're you're definitely gonna eat it. That much is a given. We're, we're, you're you're gonna eat it. Um, Flame Kakash Gecko showing that okay, it's not quite Burning Tree Emissary, but my God, does it do a good impression? Interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and just play Glarb. Tear Asunder on top. I love that. Glarb has felt like a very good engine so far. That's kind of helped me just spin through my deck whenever I need it to. Uh-oh, something bad's about to happen to me. Urtai off the top, though. That's looking pretty juicy. I think I'm going to just hang back. 
because now I can Urtai off the top, then use Glarb to surveil. Oh, God, yes. Glarb is so sick. Yeah, I'm going to counter that, which I guess they can still do something right now. In that, like, yeah, maybe they cast down or cut down my Urtai. Oh, my God, I've got Bat God on top. This is going to be so sick. Okay, sure, opponent. I drew you a card. It's probably a land. No way. They're not even attacking. This is so solid. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's just keep Bat God on top. Go ahead and play the land. I mean, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the Bat God, right? There's no timeline where I'm not. I, I feel like I'm at 22. I'm going into six mana. This is kind of an interest. I'm going into seven mana. Sure. It'll be a minute until I can flip the back god, but I just ramped. So I don't know if I even feel that bad here. Let's throw away the land. Mortuary, underground mortuary is pretty solid. Uh, can I, do I have a way to draw a card? Three, six, seven. I kind of like the ability here to just go ahead and pick something off. So I'm going to hold up mana, see what the opponent does. Hold up Urtai Resurrected. Seems like they like to play with some throw for the goats. Pretty solid when I already know I've got, a, a, like, how do they beat Phyrexian Flesh Gorger? Yeah, I'm probably going to counter that, right? For, uh, for each opponent who lost life this turn. Yeah, I'm going to counter that. I'm going to just go ahead and counter that. All right. Draw a card. Better that than them like getting a huge power boost from a bunch of random stuff. All right. And that's good enough for them. Glarp and all the mana I could ask for. Sign me up. Mosswood Dreadnought's actually pretty good here. Let me see. If I play Glarp on turn three, that's not the worst. Oh, no. It's the Vine Lasher. Um... Yeah, I think I, I, I can take a damage for a few turns. I don't think it's worth losing uh, the tempo here. Because then I'm off Glarb entirely. Oh, it's Lizard. Oh. Interesting. Well, I'm going to play Glarb. Do you got anything? I hope not, but I know that you have Menace, right? Or no, no. Gev has just Ward. The creatures are going to be pretty darn swole here, if I recall. Yeah, because I've now lost damage. Gev is just going to ping me one. They don't actually have to attack me anymore. These, uh, Both the Vine Lasher and the Gev can just sit and do nothing all game long. I think I've got to get rid of Gev. Oh, God. All right, what does this do? Target opponent, if they lost life this turn, you choose a non-land card from it and discard it. So, I wonder what they're going to discard. Probably go for the throat. Or maybe they don't. Maybe they just leave me be. They don't want Bat God to live, though. Bat God is a problem, and it's going to be extremely resilient and gain me a lot of life back. So, I think that's probably where they're sitting right now between go for the throat or Aklazots or randomly Glarb, but I, I don't think they're taking Glarb. They already have to deal with one in front of them. Whale on top. Can't play it, though. Get rid of Gev? Because Gev kind of just keeps fulfilling its own, like, nonsense criteria, right? So I'm going to be in trouble no matter what. At least now I can double block Thought Stalker Warlock. Assuming they don't just remove uh, one of my creatures here, which they could. Then we just dig for the board wipe. But Gev has to go. Gev pings, Gev grows their board. Yeah, we don't like any of that. That's fine. So this time, they don't get to choose. If they lost life, they, they reveal their hand. You choose an card from it, and they discard the card. Otherwise, they just discard a card. Okay. Um, sure. Don't imagine my opponent attacking here. Unless they're trying to test me and see if I actually am willing to double block. I am. I 100% am. Um, I like both of these cards, but I feel like I want to draw, find something, at, like, behind the whale. And I did. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Yep, and that's why I shouldn't have done that. Super punished. Because now, I have a Blooming Marsh stuck on top when I could have just played it. Or played the Blooming Marsh. I have nothing to do with my one mana. Now if they have this Thought Stalker Warlock, I'm in trouble. Okay, so I'm going to take a point of damage here. Something bad's about to happen. They're probably going to like spawn a thousand of those Burning Tree Emissaries. Please, opponent. I'm begging you to just go a little bit faster. You are a lizard deck. Come on. Come on. I'm dead. Oh, God. That's painful. Oh, crap. I forgot about that. I should have activated. 
Oops. Yep, that's on me. That's on me. I forgot to activate in response before the blocking. But I, I can't let them hit me anymore. This is already two damage. Every land is two damage thanks to Valley Flame Caller. But now I lost the ability to scry, so this feels kind of bad. And they probably just have go for the throat. Ouch. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. You got it. Maybe they attack? I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll make you play the uh, Thought Stalker Warlock again. Ooh, drew a land to really feel the punish here. Deck, I know I deserve to be punished because I should have activated Glarb. I would have been able to throw away two cards. It's a pile of misplays. This deck plays re requires me to really utilize Glarb and efficiently. I misplayed by not playing the Blooming Marsh. Then on top of that, blocking with it and not activating feels bad. But at least, hey, I know that because I put Thought Stalker on top, I'm probably not going to have to worry about get, having to discard anything. All right, they're going to get Gev again. Sure. That's actually not bad. Urtair is looking pretty good. They're not going to, like, do anything. Then that's great. I'm going to just keep attacking. Because now I think I'm in the driver's seat, right? I've got the whale. Maybe they play a land or something like that. But I don't know. What do I want to do here? I can either A, kill the Valley Flame Collar or the Give. I mean, they're going to probably just play Thought Stalker, right? They want me to get rid of this last card. Oh, crud. I forgot this part. Yeah, now I'm going to just take like a silly amount of damage for no reason, aren't I? Gev is a problem. Yeah, I, I still got to target it. Yep, take the action. Take two. This will resolve. I'll take a point at two points of damage. Luckily, I don't have anything to discard, thankfully. Ooh, that's nice. Let's exile the Gev so I don't have to deal with that anymore. Did I have lethal here? If I had swung out, I would have forced them to block. No, but they would have been okay. They would have been just fine. All right, let me try to get play this bat now. I think I got to get rid of the second Valley Flame Caller. That's just too much damage. They have a Ravine Raider, but that doesn't matter to me. Doesn't do anything. Right now, if they draw a land, I go down to five, which is okay. I've also got three life in the hangers just because of the food token. Ooh, that's good. Hold on. So now, how does this change it? So whenever you attack with one or more lizards, I'll take two, go down to five. They swing out. I've got a block, obviously. If I take this damage, I go to two. Let's see if I regret it or not. All right, what did they exile? Give? Nah, that's fine. Oh, that's pretty huge for us here. Okay, I'm not casting... Which side? Oh, no, I'm casting uh, the creature side, aren't I? Like, they got to block with one of their rando creatures. That's fine. I don't think I had lethal. They would have just blocked everything on the ground and still had a hired claw alive. Let's just go ahead and pop this food token now. And then... Let's just use go for the throat. So rock face village target lizard, modder, uh, whatever, otter or mouse will get plus one plus O and gain haste. Assuming that they use rock face village. So they have two mana. They can pump ravine raider up to three potentially. Still not enough to, to kill me here. So I'm going to just pop the hired claw, I think. Because if they play this thought stalker, it's over. They also see the restless cottage as a blocker which is what I want them to see in the hopes of like, maybe they can get greedy a little bit, but I don't know. Do they play lightning strike? If they play lightning strike, they got me cooked. Whenever Valley rot collar attacks, each opponent loses to, okay, sure. Oh, they're going to give that haste. That's what they're going to do, right? Cause that's, oh no, but I can block. That's the difference. I would take five going to one. Oh, nice. I guess they'll die. I forgot they lose a life. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you want to see me play with a batter blossom, that's right. Bats have a bitter blossom and a pretty cool interaction with, you know, Caves of Coilus. So let's see how we do in this standard video.